What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Sunday night, end of the weekend. Hopefully you guys enjoyed your weekend. Uh, it is about 9.30 p.m. here, March 19th, 2023, out here in California. Latest activity shows a 3.4 earthquake here. Looks like, uh, well, round and round we go down into the New Zealand area looks like a couple threes here popping up within the last hour or so has been somewhat quiet um, throughout the day today but it looks like things may be ramping back up out there across portions of New Zealand once again all right so let's go ahead and go down there to New Zealand again USGS though not reporting too much activity so we're going to go over here to the GeoNet servers that monitor the earthquake activity out here across New Zealand, 2.4 North Island. Looks like some uh, twos and threes up around the northern edge here of the Bay of Plenty area of North Island. Um, yeah, so a couple smaller earthquakes popping up there. Uh, look at the earthquake drums here across New Zealand. Still shows, well, um, not quite as active activity as what we've seen here over the past couple of days. Uh, noticing uh, that swarm that was up here around the uh, area of North Island, New Zealand has kind of tapered off slightly, not completely. This is the most closest station here to the area. Notice that there is still earthquake activity over the past couple of hours there at that region. There is a volcanic drum out here around the... Um, uh, Mount Terrawera, is that right? Uh, volcano out there. Uh, this region here has actually a uh, a pretty crazy um, explosive past far as eruptive activity goes here. Uh, back in 1886, the eruption down there was a uh, pretty violent eruption of the volcano uh, activity with a volcanic explosivity index of five, which is pretty significant. Uh, Mount St. Helens was roughly around the four range, so a little bit, uh, obviously a little bit larger. There has been some uh, previous eruption activity there from the uh, Mount Terrawera volcano. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Uh, there in the North Island, New Zealand. So this movement here that we're seeing the earthquake activity is very close very close to this specific uh, volcano out there there's you know a lot of volcanoes throughout the uh, Taupo volcanic range here Taupo super volcano of course sits here uh, but there's numerous other volcanoes across the area and um, still just kind of watching this folks see how it plays out that's quite a bit of earthquake activity and it looks as though this is the main station here to monitor uh, for seismic activity. A lot of these are some small microquakes, but the larger ones do show up um, across other seismographs, but looks like things are still um, somewhat active there across the North Island, New Zealand area. And again, that article they put out here yesterday is still up here on the GeoNet servers. They kind of chat about the uh, earthquake swarm that uh, GeoNet has been, ex or the uh, uh, New Zealand has been experiencing. And they believe it's purely plate tectonic. But again, um, you know, there's a, a lot of un uncertainty here. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that across the area of New Zealand. All right, uh, I want to go over here to the West Coast. Um, Pacific Northwest, a little bit of activity around Mount Rainier. Volcano here in the States. Not uh, anything major, but a little bit of uptick here across the area, including up around the summit of Mount Rainier. Very small microquakes up here uh, into the area, also around Mount St. Helens as well. Uh, this could be leading to, or uh, this could be contributed to tremor activity. So let's go ahead and take a glance here at the tremor movement here across the Pacific Northwest. Well, only 10 epicenters of tremor uh, underneath Eugene, it looks like, Oregon. Nothing else up northward. So uh, just looks like a little bit of microquake activity decided to stir up here today into the uh, Washington region. Nothing going on across Northern Cal except for the uh, typical hydrothermal operations there, Clear Lake Volcanic Field. 
little bit of swarming out here south of the bay, including a 2.0 near the Pinnacles area along the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. A little bit of swarming going on there over the last 24 hours. No major activity to note here across the area. Uh, the movement here around the Bodfish area has ceased. Last earthquake was early this morning, but I wouldn't doubt it if we start seeing things ramp back up here um, throughout the evening. Down here off the Imperial Fault, this is basically an extensional fault system here of the plate boundary. This is another area to watch here in terms of general movement out here along the west coast. Uh, a little bit of activity outside of the El Centro area, including a 1.6 within the last hour, some twos and some ones over the last 24 hours here in this area. No major swarms or unusual activity across the San Andreas Fault for now. Uh, one earthquake down there in, or over there in Colorado, I should say, earlier this morning, a 3.8. But aside from that, things relatively quiet across the rest of the country. Up here north of Ottawa, Got one 2.5 earthquake here. I'm really surprised USGS is showing that, right? <laughs> Crazy. Uh, earlier this afternoon, 2.5, 9.6 kilometers deep. Occasionally, they do get some earthquakes up there. All right, uh, Alaska area, aside from that five-pointer this morning, not a whole lot of further uptick across the northern areas here of the Alaskan region. Things looking um, very typical. One earthquake up here into the Russia area, 5.0, earlier this afternoon, 10 kilometers deep. Uh, also one earthquake here in the Kuril Kamachaka Trench. The Kuril Islands, uh, this is an area I've been watching pretty closely. I, I pulled up earthquake activity here since about, uh, oh, since about 1990 or so, 7.0 and above. Um, so this is going to show a lot of the big quakes out here, specifically just around the trench here. And, um, you know, not to mention the uh, the nine-pointer that did occur uh, somewhere down here off the coast of Japan. But I'm more concerned about this area up here around the Kurokamachaka Trench. Uh, the last earthquake, specifically along this area, looks like it was back in 2020. And uh, that was a 7.5, 57 kilometers deep. This northern end here uh, shows some earthquake activity back in the early 90s, much prior to this earthquake. Um, so this area here, roughly, you know, it's hard to say if this 7.5 has relieved the entire stress built up out here along the Kuril Kamachaka Trench. I don't believe it has. Uh, and that's why it's a little bit on the concern concerning side. Let's see if I can spit this out tonight. Goodness. Um... I pulled up the plate tectonic movement map here and added certain areas of subduction zones and their slip rate out here. This is in general average. Uh, some of these may be a little bit more or less um, than other um, folks are saying, but this is generally your average slip rate in any subduction zone area. Uh, the Kuro Kamchaka Trench here has a greater slip rate than uh, the areas around the Aleutian Trench eastward here, 83 mm per year. So that's pretty significant. And that all comes down to, um, you know, quite a bit of stress and slip rate built up here over the years with very minimal earthquake activity here along the Kurokam Chaka Trench. Further down south, uh, let's see, 2009, 2007, 2006, we had a couple, well, that was 8.3 back then. 2006, that was a pretty good one um 90s uh, what i'm getting at is that it does not take a lot of, of time to build up an accumulated slip rate out here as far as the stress and the tension in the subduction zone for a major earthquake so this has always been a prime area here uh, for some major quakes and it's been absolutely quiet here recently with only uh, minimal earthquake activity. Occasionally we'll get some deep earthquakes here across the Sea of Osk, uh, similar to what we're seeing here tonight. Uh, well, earlier this afternoon with that 4.4, 191 kilometers deep, adding to strain up here along the subduction zone. So continue to watch that, folks. Definitely a, a very sensitive area. <coughs> Goodness, I think I'm still, still a little bit sick here, folks, on my end. I apologize for that. 
uh, 4.6 off the coast of the Tokyo area, Japan, 32 kilometers deep. That one coming in just earlier this evening. As um, far as the Mariana Trench goes and the Izu Trench, it looks pretty quiet, at least according to the USGS. And the EMSC model looks fairly quiet there. A little bit of movement across the uh, Philippine South into the Indonesia area. And the Java Trench. Java Trench is a major accumulated uh, stress builder as uh, far as subduction zones go. Uh, right now, kind of uh, sporadic earthquake activity. Got it a little bit here, a little bit there, all over the place. Most of the time, uh, we can kind of pinpoint which area the momentum and pressure is building up as at. Uh, but it looks like right now things are just a little bit on the uh, sporadic side and all over the place. South America has seen a little bit of movement with twos and threes up and down the Peru Chile Trench. Uh, no major movement there to report for now, but still definitely showing a little bit of uptick here in the last hour. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that. Some movement across Turkey. And one earthquake here. Uh, let's see what that 4.4 is at. Uh, looks like... Um, uh, Iran, Iran, southern Iran, 10 kilometers deep. Nothing showing up here across. Well, yeah, actually, they did report that as a uh, 4.1, a little bit of a downgrade. Southern Iran. Turkey activity continuing there, of course, uh, with a 4.3. Mediterranean Sea looks fairly quiet as far as any large-scale movement goes. Uh, not seeing anything specific out there. A couple twos and threes scattered out and about the area, uh, but overall seismic activity on uh, the mellow side for now across the region. Atlantic Ocean looks clear. A little bit of movement north of Iceland, uh, but aside from that, things are relatively quiet here, folks, uh, across the Atlantic. Hawaii, not a whole lot going on. A couple twos out there in the Pacific. One area, and I can kind of say this here, once... Once things kind of mellow out and broaden out, we'll start to see areas down south here uh, along the uh, subduction zone here of the South Sandwich Trench get active. With all this uh, large-scale movement here that we've seen over Chile or uh, South America region here over the last week, should amplify conditions out here uh, across the South Sandwich Trench. So we'll watch that uh, in the coming days. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, I don't believe we have too much activity. We did have a little bit of a spike of movement. That looks to be probably a 2.1 or so. I don't think it's anything larger than that. A couple other smaller earthquakes prior to that and afterwards. Uh, no notification there from the USGS in terms of, of, uh, of an earthquake out there. But definitely did show up um, across the area of Yellowstone National Park. Uh, across many of these seismograph stations here. No major swarm, but uh, aside from that little quake, it looks to be a little bit uh, quiet for now. All right, let's see what else we got here. I think that's about it, folks, for, um, for earthquake activity. I'm going to check space weather here real quick, and then we'll get the ball rolling. Looking at a blackout of activity here right now. Every 24 hours, it seems like we hit it right on the dot here every night in our, in our update for as uh, that uh, blackout goes. We do have a massive, massive coronal hole. Too bad that wasn't right here, right? Imagine that position right center disk of the sun. We'd be looking at some significant solar weather activity in the coming days once it arrives here at Earth. It is positioned down south, a fairly massive one. It's been been a while since I've seen anything this big. Pretty much a uh, hole uh, allowing some high-speed solar wind stream to flow out, some charged particles. Um, with its size, it's very possible we could even get uh, a little glancing blow, even though it's not directly um, up towards center disk with the Earth plane um, solution here, but we could still see a little bit of uptick from that uh, 80 uh, from coronal hole 86 as we look uh, towards next week right now everything's green across the board nothing major um, solar flare activity let's go ahead and look at this and see what we got pretty nice looking sunspot uh, group down here 
couple different polarities and structures here uh, amongst them. Also a new sunspot here on the northeastern limb we're kind of watching. It does have a little bit of potential for some flaring as well. Got 3256, 3257, 3259 in a, a new regional sunspot here and, and they do harbor some potential uh, for some flaring. 95% chance for a C flare, M flare, 25% chance X flare for now at 1%, but we'll continue to watch that uh, area of devel development. It looks kind of like it's uh, getting ready to spark off right now. Uh, notice the structure right here indicating some, uh, some, some sparking, so to speak. <laughs> I guess that's a word I could use, right? It's pretty bright there, so we'll watch that. Uh, it looks as though that may be the area that produced a C flare, well actually M flare, within the last hour or so. Looks like we had an M 1.2. Um, doesn't look like it's been reported yet here on the solar ham site, but apparently, and judging from the uh, image here, that that's probably where that uh, M flare came from. Looks like it may be just calming down there now, so Either way, that's an area to watch pretty closely in the uh, week ahead. All right, folks, have yourself a good night. We're going to jump off here and see if I can't get some sleep tonight. Kind of horrible having, you know, your sinuses and then your um, your nasal airways, airwaves, airways <laughs> plugged. At, you know, it almost sound like uh, the old time operators out there. Not good. So, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It could could just be a little cold. could be a little virus. I don't know what's going on. All I know is I've been sicker the past year or so than I have been in my entire life. And I don't like it. I never, ever got sick before. Um, and now it just seems to be a common occurrence here lately. And that's not okay. <laughs> got to figure out what's doing it and get rid of it. All right, folks. Um, we'll catch you guys a little bit later on again. Um, welcome to the new subscribers. Welcome to the new members out there. Uh, we do do drawings every single month. We're getting awfully close here to our uh, 100,000 subscriber giveaway. Uh, coming up probably by the end of summer, maybe sooner. We'll continue to watch that and see how it progresses. But that's going to be a big drawing, big giveaway uh, to 10 people. And uh, some big prizes out there. So we'll go more into that as we get uh, closer to that 100,000 subscriber giveaway mark. Have a good one, folks. I'm out of here. Have a good night.